Okay, so let's get our green on. Now this is a 232. I haven't actually added it down here yet. Um, we'll just see how it goes, I think. So, kind of what you do really is you just put the colour on. This is Caran d'Ache pastel pencil. Um, they're fantastic. They've got very strong pigment. They're very kind of soft. Some people have said that they found bits of grain in them, uh, which they've been disappointed with because they're quite expensive pencils. They're three pounds something each. Um, I've got a nice set actually. I've got a set of 40, which um, I had for another birthday actually, some years ago. And, you know, there's, I use all kinds of pencils. I pretty well go for the colour that I want really. Just, but I do love these, they are nice, really nice. Just try and hold the board still a bit. This green, I particularly like the green in the background. And as I've said probably many times, pick a picture that you really like and just copy it. You know it's going to work then. If you start knocking about with the colour in the background, you think, oh, I don't know. Unless you've got a computer programme that you can try out different colours behind subjects, um, I, I can do that as well on my, I use Pixelmator. It's fantastic, really is fantastic. But it's all very time consuming and I knew that I wanted a bright green in the back and I didn't, I didn't really need to do that. I knew that what I wanted. If I'm not sure, and I'm not sure what colour is going to really go best with the animal's hair, or I want to try out a few different colours, Pixelmator is very good. Because it gives you an idea then. Of, and then you just try and match that colour when you're doing your picture. Now see this bit here, that's kind of a dark bit there, and it, it's, it's a nice merge from being black into dark, into the dark green. So I'll make that a little bit darker there, I think, and all along this edge. Again, I like the way it, it is, so and there's a dark, little dark patch here, which, which we could use up. So we'll get our little... Now I'm going to use the round pads for this. I can find the I've got my spares. Let's have a look. So this is just a little makeup sponge, very gentle, very light. Now I don't really want to colour this in so that you can, it's all merged into one uh, very smooth colour uh, or a hard colour. I want to just try and get the streaks of green left in it. Just to give you an idea of how that green would come out on the white paper, um, I'll, I'll put it, uh, let's see, I'll, I'll put it over here because 
These are the Karadash. CD stands for Karadash. So here it is. That's a very light touch. See the difference? That's number 232. There. See, it's strong, isn't it? So different. Okay, so we'll just get this merged in. Then I, I think I'll add another colour to make it more green. This is very... It's a very lovely colour, actually. It would be a nice contrast. But we'll, we'll see what else, because I've got lots of lovely greens. I'll see what else I've got. I've picked out a few already just to try them out. These little sponges, you could just wash them, of course. Yeah, that green needs to go up in there. This is a bit darker, so you don't need to go, don't need to rub that quite so much. It's a bit lighter up in this corner. They look very well, don't they? Now, those little sponges that go over the applicators, they're um, pan pastel sponges. I've never used pan pastels. I've always been quite happy with what I've got. So I just continue on with the dry pastel. I like it. Right, so where's my other green? Let's have a look. To try these out quickly, I just kind of do them on my paper towel here so I can see. This is a darker green. Now this is a... Um, this is a Derwent pastel. I'm just looking at my other greens. Yeah, there they are. Pick them all out earlier. I was thinking I might need something a bit darker. I don't want to go too, I don't want to go drab with this though. This one has got a bit more of a, yeah, it's too grey looking. But I want it to be jolly, I want it to be a jolly green. Yeah, this is, this is a, a 245, again it's a Caran d'Ache. We'll just put some of this, it's a bit darker. I'm leaving some gaps here now so that we'll get a bit more variation in the background. I'm not going to put this near his hair, his head, because I quite like it when you see a lighter, like a halo of light. If you can do that with the background, it looks rather nice. It makes them look a bit angelic. Also, you can see this is, this is in shadow here, and the light's just been picked out just on his longer hairs. Got a lovely highlight in his eye, it's complex, but he's just picking out the very top of his fur. But this is all shadow, so the light's coming from here. So, we want all this halo a bit there stronger. Oh, up here would be okay. 
keep those separate there. I could use the other side of this sponge, but I think it'd be a bit heavy. This is so wobbly and gentle. It's actually quite useful for this effect. You know, it's not possible to press too hard then you get a nice get a nice look. But the main thing is that you've got the colour, the most of the colour, in the background before you start your pet. And then you can then add to the background afterwards when you've got all your colours on. You, you may feel that you want to change the colour of the background a bit, so you can, but you haven't got to fiddle around on the edge. I mean, you can do it. Um, I did it on the last picture, didn't I? But really, it's, it's quicker if you, if you do it this way. If you're sure you want a background. I wasn't sure with the last picture whether I really wanted a background in it, whether I was going to need it. But I, I just decided that I, I felt it needed it at the end. So I put a black, bluey black background on that. I usually go for dark back, backgrounds if I fill in the, the paper. I do like them. But if you've got something lovely like this, just copy it. So you can see all the little different flex colour in this, which looks nice. It's like a, a lovely lime colour, isn't it? I think I'd like to try and get a bit more green. But this is a lot darker, this green I'm going to try on here now. Let's try this. Just using the side of the pencil. Squiggly. Squiggly lines, that's a good idea. And there's a kind of very dark colour in there as well, you see that. It's green, but it's, it's a very cool, cool looking green. So I want to try and get something like that in, I think. Something a bit darker. Could use a, a dark grey, actually. But I've got quite a few greens here that I can try. Gray. I've got a bluey grey here. It's not very dark. It's something a bit darker. Just looking at the tones. 
I'm looking at the tones of the, I've got two greys here, they look very close, but one's warmer, so I'm going to use the cooler one. Because actually if you use cooler back, cool colours in the background, it takes it back. If you use the warmer colours on your subject, it, it brings the subject forward. So let's just try this grey. This is actually the Faber-Castell. 181. One. Let's see how we get on with this. A few squiggles here and there. Giving it a bit more, a bit more interest, I think, as well. See how little I've got on here. You, you don't want to go too mad with this. Very light, very light application of colour here. You don't, you don't want to be too fussy with this, otherwise it will look like, it will just look too contrived. It won't look right. Not at all. You, your focus should be on the animal at all times. Unless you're doing a full picture and even then it would, it would have to be understated compared to the animal, I think. See, I'm leaving it lighter around his face, and that will those light bits will show through because we're going to put some hairs. We'll have his fur, um, his hair coming over this, which would be nice, lovely contrast. Okay, well I'm going to leave that at that now. Then we'll get on with his eye, I think next. I want to make sure that I've got everything in the right place with his eye. His, his nose and his eye are key areas, obviously, they've got to be right. Although the light isn't great, but it's okay, I can, I can do it from here. We're right in front of the window here. I'd like to work in natural light rather than artificial light because that, although I've got daylight bulbs, it does change the colour. And then, when you haven't got the daylight bulb on, the picture looks totally different. So you, you might want to then add more to it then. So, and the same goes for this, I, I suppose, but I like natural light. It's easier on your eyes as well. Your daylight bulbs are good on your eyes too, but there's nothing like proper light. Okay, I'll keep that separate. Okay, so we want the black pencil now, or dark grey actually, I'll use dark grey. And it's got a nice, let's get a sharp point on it. This is a really charcoal grey. So I'm going to be looking at that picture, our best picture, here. All the time, just looking at the dark, the dark angle there for a start. I'm going to move this over and I'm going to lean on this now because we've got colour on there. So we will need to keep this back here, I think, out there. That's it. Okay, so we're just doing this now then. It's all traced on ready. I'm just making sure that what we've got here is right. 
because we did have a bit of um, uh, had to change around a bit, didn't we, for the tracing it on. And that Pascal pencil that I was using at first was quite thick, but I only kept the line actually inside his eye. It's not on his eyelid at all. That dark line I put on is really just on the inside of it, his eye there. Just a very light touch at the moment. Just in case I do it wrong and then I can can go over it and get it or get it off and so if you can see that I'm not in front of it. And then I've got the line coming up there like that. This is the inside of his eye, this line here. So you will keep it quite angular, but that's an easy way to do it. And then when we get the colour on his eyelid, you could just slightly round it so it doesn't look so harsh. But that's an easy way to get everything right. That's quite... Try not to get in front of this so you can see what I'm doing. Still going to learn all the tricks of how to do all this. I've got two lines there. Yeah, I'll see what's happened there. It's just a very thick line. Fill it in, just very gently. And this line here is coming a little above. And then this line here is coming a little bit above that. A little bit above it and it goes down into a little point. Then we've got another line that's coming around here from the edge of this bit here. And just look at how close that is to his eye. It's very close. It needs to come really across here like this. And I'm being very, very gentle with this line because it's it's actually quite soft and we can get it in right right now doing it very gently at the moment, just filling it in. Just, just one way, you've got a lot of control that way. Just 
just get those dark areas in there. There, I want to put that in. It's kind of over the corner of his eye. There it is. That's the mark I put in there. And a dark patch under it. Now we've got the edge in, we can just darken out this bit here. Bit darker there. I'm really just looking at shapes here. See this, you've got a line of hair, dark hair coming like that, and you've got a line coming like that. So it's, to me, that's a triangle. And then I'm looking about where this line is coming in relation to the highlight in his eye. And it's really at the bottom of it. It's about there. Maybe a little bit over. Yeah, 